All right, here are the materials that we're going to need to make the post box cake. So for the very base, you need, I'm going to use wood because I'm going to screw the post from the wood all the way to the cake base, which is the other piece of wood. So for this project, we're gonna need three pieces of wood. The biggest one will be about 10 inches by seven by approximately half inch in diameter. That will be the base. And then for the post, it's going to be about eight inches. And this is three fourths um, in diameter. And it's a wooden dowel, right? And then for where the cake is gonna go, we're going to need three and a half inches by six. So this will be just my personal preference and you can change the size. So what's nice about this project is that you can scale it into a much bigger project. You just need to change the sizes and the lengths of the wood or the screws that you're going to use. So these are the basic ones that we need. And then for the to adhere them together, to keep them together, we're going to need about two and a half um, inches of wooden screw. And the only thing that you need to remember when you're using screws and wood is that one, you need to pre-drill your wood. That's why there are holes in the wood so that it will not split. So the only thing you, you have to remember as well is that the hole needs to be smaller than the diameter of your screw. Put that aside. Um, for the special feature that we want the post box to do, I want to be able to open, open and close the post box and put my special message inside. So I'm going to, to be able to do that, I'm going to use a piece of acetate or a folder or plastic or placemat and I'll cut it to about two inches by nine inches. That's where there are holes on the side. I pre-drilled that as well. And then to put that together, maybe it's here, here. I'm going to use four smaller screws, about three quarters in length. So we're going to put that here, 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 and here. And then when I do that, I'm going to show you um, closer later, I left a space here in the front and that's where I'm going to put the foam core as my cover and I'm going to be able to open and close my mailbox. But I didn't want to add any more hardware down here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of the acetate as well and glue it down here and glue this together so that later on it will be just quick and easy to open and close. All right, so gather up your materials. And oh, last but not least, cake board. So that your cake will be sitting on a food safe surface. We're going to put them all together next. Right, now we're gonna put them together. So remember earlier I said that we're going to have to pre-drill a hole into the base wood. So that's correct, I pre-drilled it. But remember that at the very base of your screw, we don't want it to be hanging out. If it does, all you need to do is just put feet, but what if we just want it to be sitting perfectly still like that and there's no feet? We need to countersink our screws and we can do that by making a slightly bigger hole to accommodate the head of the screw. I'm going to put this aside for a moment as I screw these in. So now that I can feel the head of the screw coming out, I'm going to Put that flush with my dowel. Okay. So 
there it is very straight and sturdy okay next we're going to put so this is going to be our front remember that i pre-drilled the holes there All right, so remember earlier I said you can countersink the screw here. Um, on the top, I didn't do that because there's another way for you to hide the head of the screw if it doesn't sit flush with the wood. So same thing that I did, I screwed it, and then I can feel the head of the screw coming out. check real quick there seems to be a slight a slight um, tilt to it I'm not gonna mess with it right now it looks cute to me <laughs> totally fine not necessary it did tilt like two degrees now if I wanted to hide that what I did was I made a hole on my cake board so that it will sit flush nice and flush so we're going to move that together So remember that the screw goes all the way down here. The screw at the bottom goes all the way up here. So it's very sturdy. All right, so remember that the screw I'm going to show you real quick. Our screw went all the way up here and then down. It went all the way down here. So it's very, very sturdy. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to put up. We're going to create that space that we want for the front we want for our surprise There's a little bit of space or a gap left on the front and that's because we're going to put our cover there much much later so next I'm going to prep our little bit of cake and ganache and we're going to build this cake together
right, so now we're going to put our cake on our structure. So we have a very little space for this. This is a mini post box cake and the length, you remember, of our structure was three and a half by six and we are taking two inches off for the space for our love note. <laughs> But this space is all for cake, so three and a half by approximately four inches. I'm gonna put a little bit of ganache on it. Just make sure that it stays there. And then whatever um, excess there is, we're going to. We're going to um, carve it to the shape of the post box. Right, so you can see from your view that we're going to cut just a little bit off. So the objective here is to make sure that your cake is flush with your structure. So it's going to be easier if you have a template or a guide. That's why I put that there first. All right, that looks good. While I still can, I'm going to move my cake a tiny bit just so I could cover the front with a tiny bit of ganache. Slide it back. And then this will be our first coat for the cake. So I'm going to cover the cake with ganache and then set it in the fridge for a while and then cover the entire top structure with with a ganache
So first coat doesn't really need to be perfect, but it needs to cover all of the necessary parts so that when you do your second coat, your second coat will just sit on the set first coat. So your, the, the crumbs will all be sealed. Alright, so for now, I'm going to pop this in the fridge so it sets faster. And then I'll be back. Alright, now that it has set a bit, okay, now that our mailbox has set a little bit, we are now going to put a second coat of ganache on it but this time after we um, after we go over the cake we're also going to go over the acetate and we're also going to go over the wood so we're gonna do that last we're gonna do the cake first Okay, now I just realized my board isn't very even, so it's gonna look a little wobbly, but it's actually it's actually okay. All right, so now I'm going to fill up that space between my cake and the acetate. The reason why we're doing this is we want the surface to be even so that when you put your fondant there's not going to be you're not going to see lines on the cake showing you where the acetate begins or ends that way it will look like one solid piece So remember that our cake came from the fridge, so it's a little bit cold, right? So it will set a little faster and you'll be able to scrape gently and then let it set again.
So this is what I was talking about. You see that? Like you cannot see the line. That's what we want. And here I'm just using a regular um, acetate scraper. It's the same material as the one I used for that. I'm going to put this back in the fridge to set one more time and then we're going to look for anything that we've missed and then we're gonna start covering with fondant All right, the cake is now set and we're going to prep the parts of the cake before we finally cover it. All right, so what I have here are different materials that we can use for um, covering the inedible parts. So we have, we can use um, foam board. This is a sticky back foam board. You can use felt, sticky back felt. Um, you could also use regular foam core, black or white. So I thought earlier that I might use the white. So I'm just going to clear it. I'm going to test it and see. Clearing off any excess ganache. So I think for the design I'm going to do today, it's going to be a silver, silver base um, mailbox with a couple of ladybugs. So it's going to be silver, black, and red, and with a black door. All right. So we did say that we're going to use acetate to adhere this door. To our structure so we have to do this in the right um, we have to do this in the right sequence so that we will not end up with little patches of acetate or foam core in other places that we don't need it so we're going to do it in stages so we want this to be flush which means our acetate needs to be set here and glued here very hot glue to make sure that it To make 
make sure that it sets. Right, okay. I'll test it again just to make sure that it's flush. Okay, that's the right one. Wait for it to cool. Super hot. So we're waiting for it to cool. And then the next thing we're going to glue would be the bottom. And then we're going to cover the bottom. That's the reason why I said we're doing it in stages so that we don't cover the bottom and then we're going to have something sticking out and give away your little secrets. All right, so while that's cooling down, I also cut a bit of foam and I'm going to put it right here as the handle. Put it right on front. This feels like it's set, so the next glue will go here. All right, so the next glue. So also be very aware because when you're using really hot glue on plastic, the plastic will warp. It has a tendency to warp. It's super hot right now, so I'm trying to be really careful. I want to make sure that it goes in nicely while I can still move it. Oops. Not you. <laughs> Recover. Okay. make sure it's not stained. Okay. So now that I know that it's there, right, I can open it now. Try to adjust it to make sure that it's gonna go back right. Okay. All right. There we go. It's it warped a little bit on the way up. Next, I want to cover this surface so we don't see this, you know, the the plastic piece over there. Come on. Okay. I'm going to use sticky back, a sticky back uh, foam, and I'm going to use the same template as the one I used for that. And make sure. It's just easier to place there if it has a sticky back adhesive.
before I do that, I actually need to leave space. Has not, cannot be exact because the space will be needed so that the door is going to open and close. Okay. Trying to trim anything that may be hanging out. Oh, I see. I think the bottom one is also trying to. This one is uh, this one is bumping up with our cover, so I'm gonna have to take the bottom one out because it's a little bit too thick. Okay, so it stays closed. That's the problem. I want it to stay closed. Oh, I think I overstretched it a little bit too. Okay, so I'm going to fix this bottom later. I'm going to fold it. I think I overstretched it out a little bit. And remember, it's plastic, so I have to keep on pushing it back and kind of maintain that fold. I think I loosened the fold a little bit. Okay. It's fixable. All right, while... Well, we're at it. Let's do the bottom. This one. And I'm also going to cover that with the foam. Something is still hitting it. because it's pushing our cover out, so. Right, I had to push this quite strongly so that the fold so that the fold of the acetate comes back so i think it remembered when we overstretch it so much then the the plastic eventually wants to open so there it's closed and now this is the same size as the the bottom of this cake and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut it in half. I'm going to find that hole. I'm going to make space for the, because it's not exact, the one I made, of course. <laughs> All right. A lot of guesstimating right now because it was not there you go you want that
So what we did was we just made space for the, the dowel underneath. So we can go ahead and cover and make the bottom look neat and covered. I'm able to stick it all the way And same thing for the back. So what we do want is for it to be flush and if there's any excess just take them out now so that it's not going to stick out later when you put your fondant in there. Alright, next I'm going to do, so this is sealed, this is sealed, I'm going to cover the the dowel with, um, so remember this is not, these are all non-edibles. So now you can use non-edible things to cover them because nobody's going to eat them. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover this with electric tape just have it overlap it's very thin and stretchy so it's not really going to be a problem if it I mean you can also use fondant to cover this no problem I think I did it in four. I'm going to do it in four parts.
So I'm covering this with, I covered it with electrical tape and I covered the bottom with foam. It's an alternative because um, some people just want all the surfaces covered in something edible, which is up to you. But if I did cover this with fondant underneath and fondant for this, I won't be able to hold it. So, I mean, I just want some freedom in case you want to just give your invitation cake. Right? So when you give it, say, open up, and then, oh, which reminds me, I still have to clean this up. But it's, uh, it's one of those things that you can just do and give and open. All right, I'll be back and I'll be prepping the base and then we're going to finish and cover it in fondant. All right, so for, for this portion, we're going to cover the base of our cake with green fondant. And I have shortening on the side. I just opened up fresh stick of shortening so I'm putting the shortening here on the base so that the fondant will have a little bit of help sticking to it. So we're just going to put green and distress it a little bit to mimic grass. And then this doesn't have to be perfect because it's just going to be grass we're going to distress it so if you have old fondant you can use those So I think this is enough because that is our front. I'm going to make a cut. For the back. So don't worry about it not being perfect. We're still gonna distress it. It's not supposed to be, because it's supposed to be grass, but it, it would be, it would be difficult to just do that in one flat piece of fondant. So some people use a uh, colored desiccated coconut, or yeah, colored sweet coconut and Put it as grass. You can do that too. You can distress it with crumpled up foil. So it will look a little bit like grass. Oops, too sharp.
So this is also the reason why it's good that we can hold the, the middle. The dowel so that you're not you're not gonna mess it up even if you're holding it. Take the excess off.
Okay, so before we cover the outside, let's fix this one first. Okay, so we're going to make a black half circle just to cover the inside and let it set. So when you put your message, your cookie, your fondant here, it's not going to touch the cake. I'm going to put a little bit of shortening at the back of my fondant so that we don't need anything else and it's going to stick itself to the cake. then for this part so you can see that the you can see that okay this part we're going to put a black uh, vinyl sticker on it so we want something that's thin that's not going to obstruct our um, what do you call that the, the, the door You be creative. I'm going to use a vinyl sticker, but don't use fondant anymore. So remember, this one is not food. Wherever I'm, whatever it is I'm holding on to right now, there's, there is no, um, food will not touch it. Now we need to fix this part again because we've overstretched it. It's a little bit of right at the very end. So now we have covered this part with black. I'm going to push lightly so that it goes back into position. Next, we're going to cover our little mailbox and then we're going to make our message. Right now we're going to cover it. Um, we're going to do it in two parts. I'm going to cover the back, and then the side. I'm going to put the flag on it, and then I change my mind. I'm going to put the Cake Flix logo on it, which will be matchy matchy, <laughs> which will be much nicer. So, the back, you can just trim this. I'm going to put a little bit of shortening. Sometimes I put shortening on the cake, but because it's a little bit warm right now where I am, um, I don't need to. The moisture coming from taking the cake out of the fridge is enough to make, to make the cake stick.
Okay, so I have a piece of um, vinyl here with me. You don't always need one, um, and but it helps in transferring your fondant. You don't always need one for something this small. Um, and then I'm going to use silver um, cyanide for the mailbox or the post box. We're going to need One, two, three, four, five, six, a little bit over. Here we can put a little bit of shortening now on the cake. It's dried out a little bit.
I'm gonna do a quick brush of um, silver so that it will look like a metal mailbox. And then we're gonna put our flag on, our message, put any message in there, and then we are done. So now we are coloring, we're adding a metallic shine. And I'm using um, Everclear and um, Luster Dust. So Everclear evaporates so fast. This is green alcohol. It's 190 proof. So when it evaporates fast, it leaves the dust behind and you can do another coat, another coat until you're satisfied with your cake. But if you use something like vodka, but by the time you're doing another coat, you're gummying up or eating up the previous coats. So it's hard to build a solid metallic color with vodka. So I always use Everclear. And I know in some places they use um, lemon extract, very high alcohol content. have a small flag. I'm going to stick to the side. And then I'm going to put the Cape Flix logo on it and I'm gonna get our invitation out. 